today. Official specs on Intel's 13th gen CPUs leak, Intel's ARC is having major issues, a world first, AMD's breaking up Intel's monopoly, and AMD's taking over NVIDIA's tech. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, a presentation was recently held in Shanghai, China by Intel, and a really interesting slide from it was leaked. As you can see, the slide is on Intel's 13th gen Raptor Lake S platform, so this is their desktop CPUs. First up, you can see that it mentions higher core count, but of course, we already knew that they get up to 24 cores. What we didn't know for sure is that they officially support DDR5 memory up to 5600, which is a whopping 800 megatransfers per second increase over all Alder Lake. Finally, Intel confirms that there will be more PCI Express 4.0 lanes through the chipset. Unfortunately, there's no mention of more PCI Express 5.0 lanes, so the likelihood of next-gen getting PCI Express 5.0 M.2 slots is fairly small. Of course, you could always buy a PCI Express 5.0 to M.2 adapter that we've seen, but it would have been nice to get an actual slot. Overall, though, I'm definitely excited for Intel's next-gen. But first, I've got a mind-blowing fact for you. Those of you who've already installed Honey using my link in the description have found over $47,000 in savings. And all of that for an online shopping tool that you can get free right now. So of course, Honey is today's sponsor, but it's such an easy thing to promote because it's free and you not only save money when you use it, but they now offer cash back at select stores. Plus, it's so easy to use. Simply install the app and a couple clicks, shop like you normally would, and when you're on one of their supported sites, to which they work on a ton of your favorite sites, Honey then scours the internet for promo codes and applies them for you, and you can get cash back when shopping at select stores. To start saving, just visit joinhoney.com slash gamermeld today, and a big shout out to Honey for sponsoring this video. Next up for today, Intel's first generation of ARC GPUs have been having serious issues. From driver problems to availability, the company clearly has a lot left to work out. Well, it may be even worse than we thought, as PC Perspective founder turned Intel executive Ryan Shrout apparently just got his hands on the first third-party desktop ARC GPU, the Gunner A380. In the video, he shows off the box and GPU a bit, with the second GPU being tested in the background. What's wild about this is that it's been three weeks since the initial launch, and yet Intel's US marketing division is only just now getting their hands on it? I don't really know what to make of this, but it didn't go unnoticed by Tom's hardware either. I'd say Intel looks to be having even more problems than we initially thought. Next up, a huge story drop that gives us a world first and brand new competition, specifically the world's first RISC-V laptop. Now, for those who aren't familiar with RISC-V, it's an instruction set like x86 or ARM that's been getting a ton of traction recently. Believe it or not, it's actually pretty old, but it's been getting more popular. First, because it's open source, and that it doesn't require any fees or license to use, which even ARM does. With that said, most companies pay for pre-done cores instead of developing their own, but the option is there. The second reason is because it gives integrators a new option. Choice is obviously important, as it fosters competition and ultimately innovation. Moving back to the laptop, Deep Computing and Xcalibite announced pre-orders in China, and it comes with the quad-core RISC-V processor, 16GB of LPDDR4 or 4X RAM, and up to 256GB of storage. Apparently, the first 100 customers who pre-order a laptop will get an NFT, so they're clearly in full marketing swing. I mean, they hit all the buzzwords in this one announcement. Either way, this really is a big deal, though keep in mind that the laptop is mostly made for RISC-V developers. Regardless, this is an exciting first step for the future of RISC-V. Next, it looks like AMD is officially beginning to break up Intel's monopoly. In a new report from DigiTimes and later by WCCF Tech, it looks like AMD's Epic chips are getting a foothold in the market. Specifically, AMD server chips are expected to hold a 16.3% share of the server market by 2023 and 18% by 2024. That's nearly an 80% jump from the 10.1% market share in 2020. At the same time, ARM is making big gains in the market 
as well. In fact, it's set to reach a 10% market share by 2024, which is a massive jump over the 3% market share in 2020. To give you an idea of why this is such a big deal, up until about 2017, Intel had a near 100% market share in the server space, and even by 2018, AMD had barely gained a little over 1%, meaning 18% would be a huge jump in just a few short years. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, while discussing monopolies being broken up, it looks like AMD is gaining huge ground over NVIDIA. Specifically, their recently released FSR 2.0 is being modded into games that were so far only made to work for DLSS. See, because NVIDIA was first to release GPUs that support hardware ray tracing as well as their super sampling tech called DLSS, they effectively had a monopoly, though that's really just because they created the market to begin with. Either way, it was clearly a smart move, as AMD quickly followed suit. The difference is that AMD's FSR tech is open source, so anyone can see the code and of course, use it. With it came a mod to Cyberpunk 2077, developed by Potato of Doom, which added support for FSR 2.0. Since then, modders have learned that it's pretty easy to replace the DLSS 2.0 library with FSR 2.0. Since then, multiple games have gotten support thanks to modders. I'm talking Dying Light 2, Red Dead Redemption 2, Guardians of the Galaxy, Death Stranding, and more. Of course, these aren't official releases, so it's always good to be careful when installing mods, but it shows just how big of a deal open source can be. So while that does it for today, do you think AMD's FSR will take over NVIDIA? And what about their server chips? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Honey in the description below. And as always, have a great day.